Hello, my name is Dennis Gray, and this is my teaching demonstration uh, for my portfolio, for my application for the Advanced Learning Academy at SAISD. Unfortunately, it's late in the year, and so I don't have access to a classroom full of students, but I was hoping that this video could give you a rough idea as to the kind of lesson that I do provide on a regular basis to my students. Uh, the lesson that I'm about to show you here uh, is part of our preparation for having the students in my advanced placement literature class, senior level, uh, read Joseph Conrad's Heart of Darkness. The reason that I have them read Heart of Darkness is because, number one, it's on several advanced placement reading lists, uh, and so it's advantageous toward their success on the exam, uh, but also because it's generally cited as one of the more difficult reads in English language literature, and I feel that it's important to challenge students uh, and for them to have the success with successfully navigating uh, complicated literature so that they know that in the future they can carry on these tasks and be successful. Um, now, when I introduce Heart of Darkness, uh, I, I use a metaphor uh, that guides students throughout the unit uh, in comparing reading Heart of Darkness to uh, a, a metaphorical trip through a jungle. In this case, uh, the treachery being the dense use of syntax and metaphor, all leading to profound symbolism. Uh, now, I like to train my students uh, to be successful in interpreting the symbolism in the novel, uh, and I use this lesson that I'm about to present as part of that process. And so in the larger extended metaphor of reading Heart of Darkness as a trip through a dangerous jungle, uh, the following lesson is part of my students' survivalist training. Uh, I generally begin the lesson by explaining the complexity of the syntax and the symbolism. Uh, and I begin with uh, a definition and an exploratory conversation about the nature of symbolism in literature. Uh, I teach my students that symbolism uh, or a symbol is a concrete, objective object in literature uh, I like to use the Elmo and write the notes live as I'm delivering the instruction uh, I feel that it gives students uh, a good amount of processing time as they write uh, to consider the ideas uh, I, I, Define the concrete as an object with a physical presence. And objective as uh, being a, a universal experience. idea. And so uh, a lot of times the first example that I'll give my students of a symbol would be a, a national flag. And so we discuss its concrete nature. It is a piece of cloth of particular dimensions. The design of shape and color. Okay, I explained that this is objective in that everyone experiences the flag in the same way. You know, we don't see it as different colors according to the different viewer. Uh, the cloth itself doesn't have a different texture to different individuals. It is. It has its own objective and universally agreed upon and experienced identity. <clears throat> uh, at this point, uh, I go on and discuss how the symbol in literature is transformative.
uh, it begins as a concrete objective. But it becomes, through the writer's craft and the reader's imagination, uh, a, a, an example of the abstract subject. Uh, and so now I define these terms. Uh, the subjective uh, being uh, individually defined and experienced. Now, one example that I use of the abstract subjective for my students is uh, the, the idea of, let's say, love. Uh, it, it's a generally universally used term, but depending on the individual and the context of the situation, this idea can mean many different things. Uh, love in one context is a different kind of love than in another context. We can have romantic love, we can have platonic love, we can have love from a parent to a child, uh, love between uh, colleagues, uh, this kind of appreciation. Uh, and so with that example, students tend to get an idea. You know, I, I will generally ask students to define love in the class, and we'll find that in a class of 20 to 30 students that we have anywhere from 20 to 30 different definitions. Uh, and so this gets across the idea of the abstract, subjective nature of symbolism. Um, at this point, I go back to the flag on the nose. And we understand its objective and concrete nature, but now we start to talk about what are these subjective ideas. Ideas associated with it. Uh, and so we might look at something like uh, some sense of national identity. And we might discuss how national identity uh, can differ from group to group and individual to individual. Uh, you know, we, we have uh, ideas of, and so I would ask students at this point, what different ideas are they familiar with of, let's say, uh, national identity here in the United States as represented by our flag? And so at this point, I would record the student responses and, and input. Uh, <clears throat> and then we might move on to uh, another subjective, abstract interpretation of the American flag. Uh, it also stands for a form of government. And so here I would solicit examples from students as to what is the meaning or the nature of that government. And typically we'll find multiple different perspectives. And so at the end of this lesson, uh, students should understand the nature, or in a broad general sense, the nature of symbolism in literature. It begins as a concrete objective, and through the writer's craft and the reader's imagination and understanding you know, when the reader brings their own perspective to the ideas in the text, uh, that the symbol can represent multiple subjective ideas. Um, and at this point, it's good to have students input where they provide examples of symbols, uh, different concrete objects that have ideas connected to them. Uh, and that way we share throughout the class now, if I have a group that's reticent to participate in the discussion, it's helpful sometimes to have this be a small group activity. Uh, group students together in, in pairs or groups of three or four and have them discuss and record their understanding of symbolism according to the definition provided uh, and then have them share out at the end of the class. <clears throat> uh, from 
this point, um, I move on to a short excerpt from Melville's 1851 Moby Dick. Uh, I feel that this is, uh, it's not too long, it's about four pages long, but it is packed with symbolism, uh, particularly surrounding the allegorical character of Ahab. Uh, at this point, <clears throat> I want to direct students to the idea that in literature, because symbols can have multiple different interpretations, the problem becomes how do we know that as the reader, we're correctly interpreting the symbolism according to the writer's intention, uh, which is a very high-level, difficult kind of analysis for, for any reader to do. Uh, and so I go back to notes, uh, and I discuss how metaphor and figurative language often surround symbolism in works of literature. And by understanding the nature of each metaphor, it leads us to the correct interpretation of the symbolism. Uh, some of the things that I ask students to look out for are specifically what is being compared, What kind of imagery is the writer using as part of the metaphor? And finally, uh, what kind of tone, either positive, negative, or neutral, does each metaphor carry? So with this understanding, uh, we then move on to read the excerpt, chapter 28 of Melville's Holy Dick. Uh, now, I like to use uh, an audio recording because uh, the fluidity of the professional narrator often helps students comprehension uh, in making the connections as we read. Uh, so as I play the audio version, uh, I will stop the recording at strategic points uh, in order to not so much point out particular things I want students to recognize, uh, but to ask them guided Socratic questions that lead them to their own understanding of the use of metaphor and its interplay with symbolism in the text. <clears throat> and so in this particular part, uh, we see that Ahab is compared to a bronze statue of the demigod Perseus. And so I ask my students at this point, uh, what is the first metaphor that is used to describe the character. Uh, and they will generally recognize that. Uh, and then I ask them about uh, different associations, different subjective emotional connections that they might have to those ideas. Uh, when we think of a bronze statue of an individual, uh, what ideas come to mind? Uh, and, and the feedback will help lead the discussion. Uh, and we would also talk about the, the nature of the character that he is compared to here in Greek literature and maybe give a little background about that. Uh, we also find that there's a lot of nature imagery that Ahab is compared to uh, natural objects in opposition to forces of nature. And so, again, by looking at these metaphors and asking students to come to their own understanding of the metaphor, uh, it guides their understanding of the symbolic nature of the character in whole. And the lesson ends 
with a, a short answer assignment where I ask students to go ahead and apply the experience that they've had through the instruction and, and the class discussion in writing. And so the first question asks, describe at least three of the metaphors, including simile and personification, surrounding Ishmael's description of Ahab. What are the direct comparisons, and this goes directly back to the notes and the instruction that they were given prior, uh, and what images, ideas, and tones do they bring to the reader's understanding of the character? Uh, once students have successfully and individually analyzed each metaphor, they're now ready to synthesize these ideas into an inference about the symbolic nature of the character. And so that leads to question two here. How does Melville's use of metaphor lead the reader to an understanding of the character Ahab's symbolic significance? In other words, what do you think Ahab might symbolize and what leads you to this conclusion? Uh, and so that's my lesson. And uh, thank you for your time. I appreciate uh, your, the opportunity to provide this teaching sample, and I look forward to meeting with you in person in the future. Thank you very much.